Hello, this is Carl James Eckford doing the Archaeology and History of Cymru Part 7 lecture. Unfortunately, I was unable to record this lecture with my students. So um, we've got a shortened lecture that we're going to do um, with some really nice images, uh, a nice bit of content and see if we can get some uh, recorded music on as well, uh, which isn't copyrighted um in places uh, but some of it is copyrighted so um apologize to those people who have, um recorded this music and and i hope you see it appropriate that i use it in this video and um, thank you very much for uh, your work so let's uh, without further ado let, we're going to be looking at music and instruments and the, those instruments um will come in four forms so let's start sharing the screen there we go it's so much more difficult not having um, an audience just like the old way i used to do lectures when i just finished a class and here it is so the first image itself when i did my lecture this evening i basically said right um the the four uh, instruments that i'm really interested in today and uh, not a good start <laughs> i didn't want that see mistakes without an audience so rub that one out um so here we go first instrument that we're going to look at is the cord um now rather interesting instrument it looks a bit like a, a heavy lyre type thing um and then we're we're going to be looking at the bibgorn, um, the tabor or tabor, but we're not. Um, alas, going to be looking. <coughs> <coughs> oh God! No, I haven't got the coronavirus. No, we're not going to be looking at the harp, and we're not going to be looking at the horn, and we're not going to be looking at sheet music. So that's that sorted. So much better with people. Um, so the next image we're going to um, nicely go to is. Oh, actually, by the way, anyone who wants to join um, our classes, we've got uh, quite a few online now. So uh, there's the details, and that's uh, that, there's the uh, anyone want, interested uh, visit visit um, www um, archaeology cymru online.weebly.com so different courses about um, cymru wales and uh, my my one that i do about five times a week looking at various different archaeologies of um, history of famous events anyway back to this lecture so i like to say that um, you know when people think about musical instruments in cymru they always think about the harp and as as it says here traditional instruments used in welsh music include the whistle and flute like in lots of cultures pipes and harp and um the when you think about it, the corth is a um a stringed instrument but it's very different from a harp really um they've gone sort of a pipe um a bit like a recorder so indigenous instrument from Cymru that you know the cordyce itself goes back thousands of years and so does a bibgorn but we'll be seeing images of all these once the instruments of shepherds that's the bibgorn uh, is constructed from a sandwich of wood with finger holes and bull horns bit of vague description really really but we'll go on to that the cordyce um, is a six sometimes eight stringed instrument not not very much but six stringed instrument um played with a curved bow so you can tuck it with the fingers as well um and the and we mentioned that we won't be doing the welsh harp and again when you think about it the welsh harp always is mentioned and um not any of the other musical instruments so this itself is the wonderful uh, 
Pipcorn, or some call it Pibgorn, or Pibgorn, B P I B P I B G O R N, um, and this itself is an illustration from 1778. I think it's on display in the National Museum of Wales at St Fagans, actually. And you get um, replicas of the Bibgorns at the National Museum of Wales, and reminded in the lecture that um, that in most cases you get horn. Um, cattle horn, maybe you could actually get um, a really sort of more chunkier goat's horn, but maybe cattle. Um, this itself, the central bit, the playing bit of the instrument, this is actually made, made of elderwood, but you do get actually some carved out of, well, hollowed out of an ungulate's leg, a, a goat or a sheep's leg, which is a, a long bone, a femur, or, or a um, humerus or something. Um, but again, it's, it's great to actually hear one of these actually being played, um, and hopefully we'll get a little bit of that. Um, so these are wonderful uh, bibgorns, uh, just quick, uh, that's um, one's on display at St. Fagans, the, that's Elderwood, that's Elderwood. Um, this looks more like a cattle horn probably looking more like uh, more of a juvenile cattle or something like goat. goat. Um, and this itself, that there, the central part on this one, is actually made out of do 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 drum roll, that bone that I mentioned earlier on, the ungulate bone, that's hollowed out bone, that is rather interesting. You see, playing a hollowed bone. So, um, um, we chuck this one in here quick because this is mentioned at the end. This is a Welsh bagpipes um, using, um, and there you go again, uh, Pipgorn with this part of it um, removed because it all actually takes apart its uh, various um, um, composite parts to it. So that's the that's Pipgorn, and actually that's the one that that's actually the one that I purchased for um, my other half, Michelle, as part of a birthday present. It was a birthday present that was um, three months late, simply because of the pandemic, and it arrived, and it was made in Germany. A traditional instrument from Cymru, used by shepherds up in the mountains for hundreds of years. They would have sort of added some, a bit of a, a banner over their um, battle or something. Um, this is an instrument that was used in Wales, made in Wales in different areas. There's not one single manufacturer making these um, in Cymru today like this. There's one that's making the Elder Hollow here, um, but not actually making the other bits. Um, they're actually made out of plastic in, in Cymru. So to actually get a real traditional one, um, you've got to go to Germany or France. And I, this was from a wonderful manufacturer in Germany. Um, and if I had the name, I would put it in here, but he's a wonderful guy, love him to bits. He made this for us, it took him about three months, great, wonderful birthday present. And Michelle actually played it um, in the lecture, but she's gone to bed now, so um, I'm sorry about that, folks. And what I'd like to do now is make show the elder tree, because that's what the central section is made out of. So elders used for lots of different things, you know, other than just making wine and um collecting the the um the, the flowers themselves for for wine and, and and you know um out of the berries you got syrup and and so on elder e not alder with an a so the elder flower um the wood itself used for they've gone the cord but before we go on to the cord going a little bit back to here um so not done this um to a non-live audience before, so I'm just going to see if it works. Um, so here we go. Um, and I'm going to um, see if I can get this to work a minute. So here we go. So we we'll stop the screen sharing. Share again. And oh, right. Okay, I'll get back from there. I think this is good. Okay, right. Here we go. Uh, I'd use me saying. Can can whoever I'm talking to see this? So here we go. This is the bib gorn being played. This is the one. Mm. 
now that is the bibcorn um, that uh, Michelle played similarly to earlier on. Um, and that's the bibcorn of Michelle's that was being played by the manufacturer in Germany. Um, anyone wants to get hold of a bibcorn, let me know, leave a message there, subscribe to me and I'll get you the details. He's in Germany, really trustworthy. Um, so trustworthy, um, we had overpaid him and he wanted to return the money that we'd overpaid. So that's uh, really good, isn't it? So um, so what we've got to do next is the um, the, the Kurth. Um, again, the Kurth. Um, it looks a bit like a, well, it looks a bit like a liar in a bit of a weird way. It's a square liar, uh, but it's not really. It, it's a, uh, this traditional musical instrument goes back up to 4,000 years. We've got evidence of illustrations from ancient Egypt. And this design itself um, is very similar to one in, on a fresco in a tomb in ancient Egypt. Are there people manufacturing these in Cymru today? I don't know. I sent one of my students to do research. Maybe we'll hear in the next lecture next week. It's known as a kurth um, for a number of reasons. Um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to read out. So we go to another one here. There we go. Um, and if we get a side on one, there you go. It's being played with a bow. It can, it can be plucked with fingers, but if you play with a bow, it's really fast like a violin. There you go. It's, it's like bowed. Um, Kurth, the meaning of all that. So let, let's sort of um, let's sort of go go to all, all that all that gubbins. So here we go. Um, the Kurth itself, a variety of stringed instruments so designed, are thought to have been played um, in Cymru from before the Roman times, and the Kurth itself continuously played in Cymru at least for the past thousand years at least in Europe for 4,000 years. We've got um, illustrations of Kurths and not the lyre. The lyre is more, um, is, is a bowl shaped with a long, longer shaft. This, this is really um, oddly shaped. This is strange like an instrument. Um, and, and the great thing, um, it, it seems to have been an evolution instrument that sort of evolved over time for a long period of time. But this shape and this form that you actually see in an illustra illustration is actually the, the same form that is going to come up in an image. Um, so we'll show you that image now. Um, remember the sort of weird shape there, that, that sort of part of the description I'm going to go in a minute. So get that in your mind's eye. So this ancient Egyptian uh, design, um, this, this dates back to, this was in a, on a fresco um, in ancient Egypt 3,700 years ago. Uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely great, the antiquity of such an instrument being used in Cymru, actually. So um, back, back, back to this one, folks. Is this is uh, reading back to my notes. So, um, you know, well, versions of this in St. Fagans National Museum of Wales, again. Um, the Kurth uh, is also known as the Crowd. Mm, why is it called that? Um, and it's known as the Kurth because it denotes um, a weird shape thing. It basically denotes a swelling or a bulging. So if you say to somebody, your, your um, Kurth, um, um, then it's it's almost as if what you're saying is that they're pregnant. It's, it's basically a bowed out appearance. Um, it's it's a it's a word that means hunched or humped, and it's a word that's ended up in the English uh, the English dictionary, which means crowd. Um, it's one of those Welsh words that's sort of still used in English. Um, but a slightly different meaning, but obviously crowd and um, and a hump is, is slightly different, really. Um, but anyway, that, that's this is where it sort of um, evolved and sort of denotes from. I, I, I think it's a lovely instrument. I call it the the uh, the kurth. Um, you could um, the or you could call it the uh, kruth or a kurth. Uh, 
lots of different ways of, of pronouncing this. A lovely, really nice instrument. So um, I think we'll be leaving um, our nice little instrument now. So let's just sort of uh, move on. There it is, another illustration on display in the National Museum of Wales from a publication. Um, this image from um, 1778 um, and um, the ones on display in the museum are a few hundred years old actually, that's great. This is what a liar looks like, so you all get, sort of get the idea of what shape of a liar and, and that type of thing. Um, the tabor, or, or the, this is a third instrument we're going to look at, the um, tabor or the tabor in, in, in Cumbrian, the tabor. Um, there it is, a tabor. You could sort of play it with, um, play it with, um, I don't know if you've seen my hand, but if you play with a stick between your central finger and you tap it back and forth, or you could just use it um, between your three fingers and your thumb and you tap it. It's, it's, it, it's um, a double-sided um, drum, a little thin drum actually. Um, different illustration from the medieval period it being used, and there's a nice gentleman with his with his whole collection of, of um, uh, tabards uh, behind him. And um, there's lots of the, these have actually made at, um, these are made in Cymru still at um, Tredega House. There's a, there's a um, tabard maker at Tredega House. I went to him actually and said, do, do you know um, of where I can buy a bib gore? And he gave me a list of people uh, and couldn't really get one that I really wanted, you know, a completely authentic one with horns. Um, anyway, the tabor itself and um, image, there you go, being played. Ooh, too soon on that one. Uh, anyway, back to this gentleman. Uh, oh, go away. Uh, back to this nice gentleman again. So, double side. I, um, I think this isn't double sided. This is a single skin, I think. But, but they're usually double sided. The traditional tabor are uh, double sided. Um, and let, let's sort of talk a little bit about this a uh, bit further so you know what we're doing. Um, so Tabor, uh, we, we, we know it's illustrated um, in various medieval illustrations from the 1300s onwards, so it's really good that. Um, a portable snare drum, while well, I've played the sort of snare drum, it's quite different really. Um, so what we're using a bit of a skin over it around um, sort of a circular frame and it's all sort of tensed and so on. Um, interestingly, with a tabor itself, um, we know um, there's sort of loads of illustrations from the 1300s and it's being mentioned in the 1200s as well. Um, and the tabor is not really meant to be played outside because if it gets damp, it's going to start to sort of get a bit sort of, you're not going to be able to play it and so on. So it's meant to be played inside and it's really good around the fire because as the skin gets more tense, um, you, you get more of a finer pitch and um, oh, it's great. Inside, in sort of like roundhouse would be great or, or any medieval home and not, um, probably a modern home as well where you've got the radiators on all the time. So that's the third one. And then with what we got, we've got the, um, the fourth instrument, um, which is a rather lovely instrument. So let, let, let's sort of um, get to those images. Um, oh, where are we? There we go. Goodbye, gentlemen. Um, the, the Cymru bagpipes, the Welsh bagpipes, there it is. Now, with the, if you look at the next one, that's got a, a bib gone the, there. Um, uh, you've got the bib, sort of bib gone. What the bib gone is, so you've lost the, the blowing bit of the bib gone, but the rest of it's still there. Um, and all the little holes on this one actually covered up. Um, oh no, I actually, on this, this one, it looks like the holes are covered up, but if you're gonna play it, it's gonna be, um, so if we go back to the other one, yeah, that's a good point, actually. But anyway, that, that's using a, a bib gone, um, and so obviously if it's gonna be played, um, then um, that that looks like it so it looks like it's some kind of sheath rather than, Covering the holes after it being used as a bib gone. Don't know. Can't really ask the person who made it. Um, so if we go back to this one where there is somebody actually playing um, a flute, um, and 
what we'll say about this is uh, uh, the Cumberland bagpipes, the Welsh bagpipes. Um, it, it can because it's the Welsh bagpipes is being used in different parts of Cymru. It's could it's in plain type is known as the Pipur Kurd, or the Pipiai Kurd, or the Cod Biban, or the Cod Bibai, or the Bib God, or the Cod Bib, or the Pipiai Gurd, or the Quibanogi, or, uh, or the Quibanogul. Uh, um, cod or the Sachbid or backpipes or the Bakbid. The different names, different parts of Cymru. Um, generic term, the Bibai. Nice. So we know we know that this is being used from various descriptions from the 1330s, and it's one of three wind instruments that's described in the 1330s, one being the organ. Uh, the other ones being the big gone, and the other ones uh, the the bagpipes. So that's that's great. Um, and then it's also mentioned by the Welsh poet um, Yolo Goch, and they were in thirteen seventy six. So instead of writing about wars and sort of um, people like Llewellyn at Europe and the Twelve Edwards or all England, or they they like talking about musical instruments. There were lots of poetic um, descriptions of musical instruments. We know the ones that we've described were actually being used in, in, in Cymru all those years ago. So the one thing I would like to finally say is that lots of these musical instruments are being revived um, and, and sort of coming back in to being used. But fortunately, you can't really pick, pick up a, um, a £350 bib gone in your local um, department store or Tesco's. You've got to go to a specialist to get one made, and there's a lot of hassle trying to get get there. There's actually, actually the Pipgorn um, group on Facebook, which I'm going to actually share this video to anyway. So, guys, thanks for getting me our German friend to make the Pipgorn. Really appreciate that. Um, and do you know what I've actually failed to do? Uh, is I've actually failed to play. Um, the 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 music of the um of the kurth um which i need to do and then we'll listen to some really mu strange music associated with the welsh bag bagpipes so that's what we're going to do now and the stuff about the welsh bagpipes is so weird but, uh, so anyway let's just um let's get let's get that and you can look at this image just to imagine it being played. Oh, actually, do you know what I'm going to stop, stop muttering? Um, if we go to this, and uh, let's play that music. I knew there was something missing. So, um, and we'll show this lady, actually, I'm all over the place, aren't I? Fingers and thumbs, I don't know. So, you know, let's have her playing now. Um, the um um the the curve um so here we go um uh, i would like to and then we play go
I tell you what, that was good, wasn't it? That was really, really good. So um, what I'd like to do next is that if we can um, sort of stop the share there. Um, and we've got one more video. So I'd like to thank you for listening to this today. And uh, not in my usual style because I've got an audience and I'm not used to teaching in this style either online. So we've got some more music coming in. It's not the music I wanted. But it sounds really good. Now what what we what we've actually got next um, is um, so what I'm going to do if you can give me a second I can get this um, sorted out. So uh, um, hang on, right? Okay. Hang on. That bit of music I wanted isn't lined up. Hang on, where is it? Um, hang on, it's not there. Um, I'm going to type in um, Welsh bagpipes. Oh, fiddlesticks. Right, hang on. If everyone can sort of bear with me, I will get this up. So, hang on a minute. I've refound where I wanted to go. So, we're going to play this out today. So, enjoy this. Uh, it's, it's a really, really strange um, sound. Um, this is the um, um, the Welsh bag, bagpipes and um, take it away.
thank you for um, thank you for watching it, folks. Uh, back to me. And um, the last the last lecture of the season will be um, occurring um, next next Wednesday, and that's going to be looking at churches part one. We will have another series of archaeology and history of Cymru, um, another eight classes, um, and that will be the end of um, that will be the end of that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, please. We'd really appreciate that. And obviously, anyone wants to join our classes, um, please do so. Thank you very much. <laughs>